Hi guys, I'm making a video today called how to make more animation or I'm going to title it something like that um, and it's in response to a lot of people who have uh, explained to me that they are finding it difficult to create enough time for animation and they get uh, distracted a lot with um, with other activities and I totally feel your pain there, it's very tough and um, we're living in a day and age where distractions are all around us and they're trying to get our attention and um, as animators that's a real nightmare situation because you've got to be able to sit down and get into that zone where you're animating for hours on end and it's really tough and unfortunately it doesn't get much easier um, as you get better it's still difficult to um, you know animate uh, for hours on end and get into that zone because you know if the phone rings and you or you get a Skype message or something it takes you back out of it and you um, you won't get as much done you it might be hours until you get back into the flow of animating and into that mesmerizing um, trance that you can get into when you're making art so um, I've written down a few bullet points of what I would uh, maybe recommend as a bit of advice. You, this, look, you can take it or leave it. Um, I'm not an authority on this and I still get distracted just like everyone else. But you might find it helpful in some way. So um, first of all, I'm going to talk about a few things with when it comes to animation production. Um, there's a limit to how much you can make by yourself with animation. Uh, it's just extremely time consuming, especially frame by frame animation. And uh, so what you do is you, you, you reach this point where you're working away at it really hard and um, you can't actually make more animation because you're pushing yourself to the limit of what you can do in the time that uh, is given to you. So there are two ways you can go from here and um, both of them are good solutions. Um, the first is to create more room in your daily life and if you think about it um, this method will give you a quick boost to how much animation you can output uh, by eliminating things in your life that are stopping you from making animation but it's still one of those things that you can't just uh, you know it's not infinitely scalable so still if you only did sleep and work you could still only get a certain amount done um, but it is going to really help some of you who maybe you only make one animation a year or you're only being able to make a little bit because you've got other stuff that you enjoy doing and it becomes more of an issue of priorities like you've got to ask yourself what do you prioritize um, but that's a different topic that I'll get to later um, the other option is to take on extra help so you can do this by either collaborating with other people where it's a situation which is mutually beneficial or you can hire them and that is also a situation which is mutually beneficial so um, hiring of course involves money and um, animators are not known for being uh, people with lots of disposable income so um, you know um, that too has a limit for most people depending on what background you're from and uh, uh, you know how much money you've got in the bank account so for many who don't have the money um, it comes down to cutting out time wasters so I'll talk about that first So um, the, the mindset shift in the bigger picture is you have to turn your attention from being a consumer to a producer. Um, I know those are big words, but uh, basically um, you need to start making stuff instead of just enjoying other people's stuff that they've made. Um, so the quickest biggest thing that you can just do that will just save you a chunk of time of course I'm assuming here but um, I would recommend you cancel a lot of your subscriptions to things so these are things like Netflix Steam accounts um, Blinkbox Hulu all these subscriptions to TV stuff 
Um, if you've got a TV in your room as well, um, sell it, sell it to someone. All right. Um, if you've got Netflix, save yourself some money, save yourself $10, $10 a month or however much it costs. And, um, you know, with that money, you can save up for that Cintiq you've been wanting or something and you can, uh, you know, push yourself further in your field. So um, you've got to take your energy out of things that are just sucking it up. So um, TV is a really obvious one. It's a really easy one and gaming. Um, I know with the certain age group, um, gaming is like a, a big thing. And, um, you know, if you reduce it, you can uh, give yourself a lot of time to make animations. And um, I understand that gaming is something that um, unites people and it brings people together, especially in interactive games where you play with your friends. And it can be really difficult to tell your friends, actually, um, sorry, I'm, I'm not going to be playing multiplayer to get today. I'm going to be animating instead. Um, but then what I would suggest you do is you find people who are equally interested in animation as you and become friends with them and then you know you can have Skype open and you can do calls where you're still working but you're in a call in Skype and that's much better than playing multiplayer for hours on end for nights on end um, so that for me is like once you do that I'm pretty confident you will double your time if you have previously been subscribed to these things and use them regularly it will like double your output and you'll get twice as much animation made um, and you'll learn a lot more because you're doing more animation. So I know it's a bitter pill to swallow and some of you are going to be like, no, hell no, I'm not doing that. That was a weird bird noise. Um, some of you are going to be like, no, I'm not doing that. And that's fine. I mean, this is just advice. Don't take it too seriously if you are really, really into your games. Because I was there once, I was like addicted to an RPG game. I'm not going to say which one because it's embarrassing. But, um, you know, I eventually what happened was um, Flash Animation took over my obsession with that game. So I went from one obsession, obsession to another obsession. I can't say obsession right now. Um, so I became obsessed with Flash and obsessed with animation. And that's how I was able to transition from my gaming addiction. Which um, I guess you could argue isn't the most healthy solution. You shouldn't really be addicted to anything. But um, I'd much rather be addicted to animation than addicted to playing a game where the rewards in the game aren't... They, they're not real life rewards. But with animation, you can have a career in animation. And you can make money with animation. How cool is it? that you can make money off of something that you really love doing and it's really fun and it's like a game to you. It's a great situation to be in. Whereas, you know, it's pretty hard to make money as a gamer unless you're like elite and you're living in Japan or you're part of like, uh, you, know, you know, you get like uh, sponsorship, which is, uh, I hear it's very difficult and it's very, uh, there's a different industry altogether and you're here for animation. So I'm assuming you want to, do more animation and you want to get into animation. Um, so make animation your guilty pleasure. Make it the thing you geek out about and you read magazines, you buy magazines on, on animation, you buy books on animation, you, you're a fan of animation, you love animation. You know, really just get deep into it and get involved in it and you'll, it, it will make you want to do more animation. Um, so I do procrastinate from time to time and it's usually... Um, trying to get into animation and then once I'm in and I'm in the program and I'm making stuff then it's easy but you know um, if you're able to get techniques that are going to get you sat down in front of the computer without wasting time then do that um, there's a great quote in Stephen Pressfield book called the war of art and he says something like um, I'm abbreviating here but he says something like um, uh, it's important to know the distinctions between what's important and what's urgent and to do the important thing first. So he's referring to your creative field. Just uh, ignore stuff that is like, you know, the petty little things that you're meant to do. Try and push them back just a little bit so you can sat, sit down and do some work for the day. Um, okay, so what's my next point? 
Um, yeah, so you might be hearing this information and being like, no way, man, I'm not doing this. Um, that's fine. It might be the case that you don't, uh, you know, you want to do animation as a hobby and it's not, uh, it's not important enough to you that you dedicate all your time to it. Unfortunately, animation is one of those things where um, you, you've got to make the distinction uh, as whether you're okay to be a hobbyist um, or you're okay to, or you want to go all the way and become a professional because um, I'd say anything between those two is a bit of a waste of time um, because animation demands a lot of sacrifices if you're going to be a professional. Um, some might argue with me there, that's, that's fine, it's just an opinion of mine. Um, what else was I going to say? Okay, so a quick little tip that I wanted to put in here. Um, set timers for yourself, that can be really um, useful. So you can say, I'm going to get this animation done over the weekend because I have nothing planned for the weekend. And then you squeeze like a massive amount of work into a weekend. You might have like get very little sleep, but what it does is it, it squeezes out all of the unnecessary stuff in your day. And so, because you have to meet the deadline. So you're, if you're saying you have to meet the deadline, then it squeezes out all the stuff that's not necessary because you just, you can't do it by choice. Um, for me, I'm not very good at setting my own deadlines. I like other people to set the deadlines for me so that I feel a degree of responsibility there. So I have teachers who say, you have to get it done by this date. And then I say, well, I don't have a choice. I have to get it done by this date. So even if it's not perfect, the animation, um, I will strive to get something presentable to them by that date. And uh, you know, you can do a lot in a very small amount of time uh, if you test yourself in this way. Um, so, you know, I don't want to get into time management strategies too much because, uh, as I explained before, even if you are like the most time management efficient person, you can still only get a certain amount of animation done within a certain time without killing yourself. So um, I really suggest you look into collaboration opportunities with people and that way you can uh, get a lot made um, with the people you know. Um, so there's a few examples of this. There's a, there's a group of animators called Ghost Satellite. I would recommend you check them out and see what they're doing. They like get together and there's loads of talented animators and they produce animations together. Um, there's also one called The Jam Cave. Um, I'm friends with quite a few people in The Jam Cave and they're really nice guys and they do the same deal. They get together on certain weeks and they make an animation together and they put it out there on their own channel and they stream it and stuff and it's really great fun. Um, and they do it together and it's that's really cool and I'd love to have something like that and I'm working towards building a community like that but that's for another time. Um, also Sleepy Cabin is another example. That's where, that's a little bit different because they, um, they still make their own animations, but they all upload them to one website. So that's still pretty cool. Um, and there's a little group of them that do that. Um, so yeah, those are some of the ideas that I've had for this. I hope it's been helpful. Um, remember, you've got, you've got to at some point make the decision. Are you going to go all the way? Are you going to be a pro animator? Um, this isn't necessarily about skill, it's about like the the mindset and the, um, the attitude towards it. I think that if you make the decision to go into being a pro animator, it doesn't matter what skill level you're at, you can get to a professional skill level even if you don't consider yourself very talented. Um, I didn't draw growing up, I didn't draw as a child, I wasn't talented at drawing and um, I got into animation because I started getting really interested in it and that's all that counts. It's just, are you super, super interested in it? Are you fascinated by the subject? Okay, after that, that's fine. If you have that inner resource, then you don't need necessarily to um, have natural born talent. 
Uh, but yeah, if you're not um, if you're not cut out for it, if you're not willing to let go of certain obligations, if you're not willing to take risks, um, financial risks, you know, because it's not a steady paying job and stuff like that, then uh, you might have to just have it as a hobby and only you do it occasionally and just do it for fun and not progress at the same speed as someone who's going pro. So yeah, I hope this has been helpful and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Please uh, check the links in the description. Just open up the description and have a look through the links that I offer there. And um, if you like, go to my website. It would be really cool if you do that. Join the forum, um, check out the workshops that I offer. Uh, yeah, that would really help me out. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. I scale it with the centre point being the feet because I don't want the feet to move. So I just drag that centre point to the feet and then scale around it. One thing I think I could have done is laid out a line on the floor for the robot to follow and that might have been